kids. Oh, I'm so glad if you've got to tune in right now. I have missed you desperately. I've missed you at Sunday school. I've missed you at PALS. I've missed talking over the word with you. I've missed listening to what you had to say. I've missed our song time and our prayer time. I know this has been a different time for everybody, but we'll all get through it together. All right, this is Fresh and Friends, and hopefully it's going to be on YouTube and on our link at the Church of Christ so that you can go and tune in on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Here's some uh, business that we have to take care of. Usually that, you know, when you watch a show, it scrolls down and shows you what the show's about, and it shows you all the people and technicians. Well, our technician is Clayton. He's behind the camera, and I had to get a babysitter today, so Miss D has the puppies. So the first symbol that I wanted to show you was, you all know this symbol, the thumbs up, because that's the like symbol. But before you push it, Make sure that you go and ask mom and dad if it's okay to do it. So I'm going to give you three seconds. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Now we like it. And the other symbol is the bell that subscribes to YouTube. So again, you got to get mom and dad's permission. You got three seconds. Three, two, one. All right, good. I'm going to put this sign behind me, and we'll talk more about that later. All right. Every week we're going to try here on Fresh and Friends to go and have a memory verse. This is our first one. Remember it? We used it in VBS this year. It was from Joshua 1.9. Let's read it together. Be strong and courageous. Oh, that's good for this time. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Joshua 1.9. So you work on that by yourself or work on that with mom and dad or a brother and sister and see if you can't go and memorize that verse every week. That'll be a good thing. All right, next, we want to talk about some advice that we have here on Fresh and Friends. Since we're in such an odd time right now, we know that we saw over here, you'll look when we get to the Friends Corner, there's some disinfectant wipes. We went, and boy, Michelle and Rod have cleaned the church, and we cleaned it with the teachers before we left on Wednesdays, and Sunday morning we had cleaned it, so we really wanted everyone to be safe. So we have sanitized our church from top to bottom so that it will be safe when we all get to come back. So some physical advice that you probably have been hearing on the television is wash your hands. That's such a good thing. And you also need to go and obey your parents. If they go and tell you, you can't go with us to the store today or you can't go places, that's okay. Because they don't want you touching everything because there's still people that need to go and shop and get your groceries. And they advise our president and our governor that we just have maybe mom and dad go to the store and pick up groceries for your family. Maybe for grandpa and grandma, maybe for an older neighbor. So that we don't have a lot of people in and out of the stores because we got to keep our distance from each other so that we can stay safe. So that's the mo mo mainly why they don't want you to go to the store with them. So you're not touching a lot of stuff for your safety and the safety of the older people that are around you. Okay, a way to go and honor your parents at this time is by what I just said, obeying what they say. They've got a lot of decisions they have to make at this time uh, in their lives for your family and for themselves and for others around them. So you need to go and be patient with them. And honor them by listening to them and obeying, trying to be helpful. Some things I'd heard that kids were doing was I heard there were some kids that went and cleaned the garage without even being told. Oh, dad come home so happy and surprised. What a nice way to go and honor your parents. I heard of some brothers and sisters that went and mom and dad, they helped with supper. They were doing extra baking. Uh, kids have been doing their homework like they were told. That honors your mom and dad. That honors your teachers as they send stuff to you. So do those kind of things. That's a good physical things that you can do. All right, how about some spiritual things? Well, we need to pray because God He's to who we should have done first. He's the one that's got everything in control. He knows what's going on, and he's going to protect us and take care of us. Pray with your parents. Pray on your own. Pray with your brothers and sisters. 
those are all good things to go and do at this time. And lastly, how about mentally? What's some advice mentally? Well, read your Bible. Do your schoolwork. Read your Bible. Read your Bible first before... Oh, oh, I hear somebody at the yellow room door. Let's see who's here. Hi, Tricia. Hi. We've been out for a while. Hello, it's hello, kind of cold hello. out there today, but Hi. we just took a short walk and thought we'd come and see you. Well, come here, this Jigger. is come good. Here, come here. There you go. Oh, Everybody knows Miss D. She's been Hi, watching kids. the press for me. Miss you guys. It seems like forever. And miss your hugs and, and your encouragement and just your sweet faces. It's just really looking forward to when we can all be back together. But we got to be smart so we can do that. The longer it takes, the sadder we get. So we want to do the right things and follow instructions. Yeah. Can you sit down for just a second? I think I can. Okay. Think Notice Miss D and I, we're doing like you're supposed to. We're going to keep our distance. And so that's why our dogs are on leashes, but we can hold them. It says our pets and stuff, but we need to go and not be getting close to each other. That is a family. So do you like our scars? We've got to show you. You notice that Ch or, uh, Skeeter here, he wanted to show you that he's a Husker fan. So he's got his Husker sweaters scarf on today and oh we made a new one for miss skeeter or miss chigger she's got on her little uh, one too so well i'm so glad that you went and brought those i think they want to walk again miss i D. think so so i'm going to let go. them go i'm going to throw Ready this leash to, to you and let you uh take them see and i want the kids to notice my really cute oh, shirt yes. that chigger got me because you know we want to use our good manners and sugar kind of had a problem and Mm -hmm. She wanted to apologize to Miss D, and so she got me this really cute shirt that looks like her brother. <laughs> so we'll see you guys another time. You all just be really careful out there. Okay, come on, guys. Let's go for a walk. Bye, oh, Fresh. Hey, Miss D, Miss D, we have to do a commercial. I forgot. Okay, so I don't know how many of you went and got to order these yet, but I'm going to get my coat off here. Our new t shirts came in. For the Church of Christ, we are so glad. And Miss D's going to show you the back. There we go. Oh, you see what it says? It says to love and to serve and to connect. Oh, how cool. How cool. And then on here, so everybody will know that we're from the Weimar Church of Christ. So I hope you get to order one because, boy, it would be fun. Because we got them in kid sizes and adult sizes. So thanks, Miss D. Thank you. Right. Bye bye. See All you right. later. Come on, guys. Right. Well, it seems like forever since we've had PALS, but what we want to do today is I want to start off with, we've been studying trivia, all kinds of trivia. So we're going to have a little trivia test here. And so I want you to play along. There's 10 answers, so you can use your fingers to keep score. And it's not a contest. It'll just be fun. If you go and score a point, put up one, keep track of them on your fingers, do it with your brothers and sisters, even mom and dad, and have fun on this trivia uh, review that we're going to do. So when you're there at home, yell out the answer. We'll see who the first one is. Okay? Here's your first question. How many books are in the Bible? Did you say 66? If you did, you're right. 66. All right, if you got that right, one point. Second one. What book of the Bible tells the story of creation and the fall of man? Did you say Genesis? You would be right. Okay, this one kind of has two answers, because you have to get two of them right. Can you see the pictures? Name at least two judges that we study. There was one woman and two men. One of these men had turned away from God, but he went back to God after he'd sinned. Can you name two for two points? The woman was Deborah. And the men were Gideon and Samson. Did you get two points? How many do you have now? Name 
at least one king of Israel. One of them turned away from God. Two of them were a father and a son. Did you get Saul and David and Solomon? This was the father and this was the son. This is the one that turned away from God. How you doing? Who carried a special message to God's people from God his, himself? Well, it was the prophets. Can you name any of them? I've got four that are shown there, but here's a lot of their names. We have Isaiah and Zechariah, Malachi, Hosea, Micah, and John the Baptist. Did you get some? If you name more than one, you might give yourself another point. Who was the Savior God sent to die for our sins? Oh, this is an easy one. Jesus, I bet you all got that one. Who were the 12 men Jesus picked to be his closest followers? Were they apostles or disciples? That's a trick one. They were both. They were his 12 apostles, the 12 that traveled with him. And then we were disciples also. And we are all disciples when we follow Jesus. All right, here's the last one. How are you doing? Who was the man who started out persecuting Christians when he was named Saul and became a Christian missionary himself? And he changed his name to Paul. That was an easy one, didn't you, Saul to Paul? All right. Very good. Did you have fun doing that? I hope so. You guys have learned a lot of trivia about the Bible in the last few months that we had at PALS. I hope it sticks with you, but not just so that you can answer, answer Bible trivia questions. The Bible is the Word of God, and God wants us to learn it. He wants us to read it every day so that it's not just trivia to us, but it's our guide for life. God wants us to believe to be believers like Paul told his student Timothy to be. Now I want to read a scripture and it's in 2 Timothy 2.15 and as you all know that's in the New Testament so if you want to remember that and look it up again later 2 Timothy 2.15 Study to present yourself approved to God as a workman oh that's why I like this verse who does not need to be ashamed accurately handling the word of truth. The more we learn the Bible, the more we know about God. And the more we know about God's will. We won't be easily swayed by false teachers and people who try to manipulate the Bible. We will be able to use the Bible's words wisely and with compassion for others. <clears throat> the Bible's not a book of trivia. It's the word of God. We want to challenge you to dig into God's word every day, now and for the rest of your life. God gave us the Bible to teach us where we came from and where he wants us to go. Through the Bible, we learn who created us. We learn that this world became messed up with sin. We learn about God chose a special people and prepared them for the coming of the Savior through the prophets. We learned how God, Jesus was born, how he lived, and how he died for us so that he could forgive our sins. We learn about the early church founded by the disciples so that the whole world could know the story of Jesus. We learn that God will have a new home prepared for all who believe. That's called heaven. All of this was written down by men of God so that we could know God. The men who wrote the Bible wanted all of us to give our hearts to him. They wanted us to know that God loves us, that Jesus died for us, and that we can trust him with our lives. Reading the Bible is fun. If all we get, though, out of the Bible is fun trivia, we're missing the point. 
The Bible is a love letter from God. It's a history of the world. It's an invitation to start our own journey with Jesus. There are many things that we can learn about the Bible, but the greatest lesson is this. God loves you and he wants you to love him back. Let Jesus into your heart today and begin to study his word. The Bible's adventure doesn't end with knowing some facts from Genesis to Revelation. That's just the beginning of learning how to live a brand new Jesus-filled life. Well, thanks for listening and thanks for going and uh, being here to share with me today. I do have some fun things that I'd like you to do. So I have a little list here. First, find some of your Bible school papers. You got some at home in your room? Retell the story from those papers to your family, whether it be mom or dad or your brothers and sisters. Draw a picture of a Bible story that's fun for you. Maybe that one that's on your picture or on your papers, or maybe another one that you've read on your own. Practice saying this week's memory verse, Joshua 1.9. And one thing that you need to do for next week's lesson is this. Ask your mom or grandma if they have an empty egg carton. That's all I'm going to tell you about the empty egg carton, because next week we're going to use this in our lesson time, and you can do it with me at home. Okay, last but not least, on Fraysha and Friends, I have a couple announcements here that I want to show you so that you can go and tell mom and dad if they're not sitting here watching with you. Be sure and tell them that every Sunday morning uh, on Facebook Live at 1045, Clayton and the praise band come on and we get to worship watching it on our phones or on our computers. It's really a good experience. So be sure that you tell them if they're not in the room with you that you want to watch this with them, okay? And then come up with interesting ways that you do your own communion when it's communion time. That's always fun to see. Miss D and I did it, and we had crackers and some juice at her house that we used for our communion. And don't forget, this is also for mom and dad and kind of our high school kids, okay? This is the Daily De Digital Devotions, which are called Daily Digital Devos. That's a tongue twister. And Clayton does these every Monday and every Thursday at 8 p.m. on Facebook Live. So don't forget to tell your big brothers and sisters and your mom and dad about this because these have been really good too. Well, that's all the time that I have right now, and Mr. Clayton is going to come because he has one more message for you. So thanks a lot for coming and watching Facebook and Friends. See you next time. Thanks so much, Fresha. Hi, kids. How are you doing? I hope that you are doing well in your homes. I know that you're separated from your friends, but I know some of you are doing FaceTime and some of you are doing other things uh, to connect with people, and that is wonderful. That is really awesome. Um, Easter is a time that we celebrate, celebrate the resurrection of Jesus, and we celebrate that in a lot of ways. And some of you are probably used to doing an Easter egg hunt. Well, we aren't going to be having any Easter egg hunts this year, at least not with real eggs with all your friends and, you know, going and, and finding them in the park and, and that sort of thing. But we are going to do a giant egg hunt, and we're going to hunt for eggs that look like this. And this is the start egg. And so between... Uh, starting at 5 p.m. on Good Friday, you can load your family up in the car, ask mom and dad or grandma and grandpa, whoever is in your, in your household, to take you on this giant egg hunt. Anytime uh, from 5 p.m. on Good Friday, that's next Friday, um, through Sunday night, that would be Easter Sunday. And you can go with your family and you start with this egg, which will be on the side of our church sign right on M Street. So normally where you may pull up and maybe where your parents might drop you off right there, you will see the start egg and some instructions about what to do from there. Uh, from there, you'll get a clue to go to egg number one. 
and at egg number one, you'll have a devotional thought there, and it'll give you a clue to go to egg number two. And egg number two will take you to egg number three, and then your goal is to find all 12 resurrection eggs on your scavenger hunt. They will be in Wymore and Blue Springs or in and around Wymore and Blue Springs. And if you get stuck, you can even go ask for a hint on Facebook. So that is a giant egg hunt that's coming up. And I hope you, uh, you're able to participate with your family. And we will remind you about this on next week's episode of Freysia and Friends on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. And uh, remember to be courageous because God will be with you wherever you go and even if you have to stay home. Thank you, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.